Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Token Games Podcast. I'm your host and sometimes referee, and today I'm joined by Pika Datmitsu. So, the holidays. Tracer's Gay Steam <laughs> Sale just started. <laughs> And I got a Yoko booby mouse pad from a friend. Uh, Life is decent. Not touching that one, literally. Michael Dad Hill. I play Tracer and Lucio. Let's turn up the porn. And of course, the unstoppable force, Kyler Dad Telford. I'm the only fool in here smart enough not to play Overwatch. Thank you. The internet will tell you a new one. I'm not saying shit. All right. So today's topics are uh, in our phase two format as part of the new norm, which is gaming journalism. If there is such a true thing as that, not getting philosophical, kind of sort of literal. We talk about topics or topics I've discovered that happened this week or hell, even today, as well as a few of the things that have been buzzing around in my brain. But first... We're going to start off with the two most notable topics because, well, they're not journalism related, so it's not reactionary based. Topic one, emulation. The savior of game kind or its personal nuclear apocalypse. What I mean by this is over the years, not only has emulation become more prevalent, especially among older players and younger players, but... Uh, for lack of a better term, their pimp status has dramatically increased from the early 2000s. By comparison, you almost wouldn't recognize half of these programs. Now, of course, the game industry has issues with emulation software because it's basically saying, hey, how would you like to get all these games that we charge money for and then get screwed by GameStop for, for free? And then do all types of things to them that normally you wouldn't be able to do or weren't easily made accessible. Like, well, basically building an in-house game shark. And for you young bastards out there, the game shark was the original cheat device. It wasn't a hacker. It was literally a cheat device. You stuck it under a cartridge or you stuck it in the system and then took it out and then put the original game in. And it hacked the shit out of it. Good shit. I love a good day. Yeah. Walk and walk cheat, OP. Then Loved Grand it. Theft Auto Hot Coffee mod happened, and then, well, Game Shark went bye bye. Now, that being said, I'm gonna start with my opinion first because I am I have a very unique stance on this because I've been in front of and behind, and in some cases, uh, individual shut inside. Up, Telford. Shut up, Telford. I hope what you guys. Shut up, Telford. Knew you was gonna do some shit. Hey, whatever you like, man. I don't judge. Yeah. Don't ask on time. Yeah, 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 yeah. No one asked you to show off your teeth, but I don't think you can stop, can you? Anyways. I mean, so, I can, but sure. loud and proud, baby. Sure, mm. sure. Hey, Hill, you hear that? He says that he can actually hide his teeth. Isn't that <laughs> yeah. Anyways. So, I'm actually in the middle of being an independent game designer, as most of you may or may not remember. Um, so far, like I said, we're in sort of the alpha, damn near beta phase for the demo. I'm not even thinking about when the full published game is going to come out. I'm more focused on the demo and the demo combat at this point. And at the same time, I was raised in the beginning of the early emulation era when stuff like that was was so new that people thought you made it up. And then on top of that, I have machines around me that can pretty much guarantee that if it came out before 2013, I can run it on my computer and probably better than it did on the original system. Also, I still support the industry sometimes by buying games through token games, but I still buy games and I make sure that I am smart and conscious about my DLC purchases because I know how easy how easily numbers and money gets hidden from the people that make the shit. Now, that being said, I'm a bit on the fence because I look at it the same way as the movie industry does when the almighty VHS recordings come out. I don't know if y'all have noticed or if y'all been around long enough. Well, me and Coleman have, but fucking entertainment kind of sort of goes in a cycle. Something is on top. Something is scared it might get dethroned. So you either adapt or you adapt and you try to shit on the other guy 
while they're doing their thing, minding their own business, and they're completely innocent. It happened when radio transitioned from its popularity uh, peak to TV. Now it's happening again when we're going from video games. For those of you that don't know, just this year alone, which isn't even over, video games has cleared more money by itself than the combination of television and the movie industry. Yes, it's that big. We're making double digit billions a year. I like it. And the number is only going to uh, increase. In fact, the only place that's been underperforming, which, well, we already talked about this, is the VR department. So, my thing is, is that much like the industry, we all know, and even if you haven't seen them, the older movies get and the longer their history, the easier it's going to be to lose track of things. This was even an issue in the radio era, obviously, because it's one of the oldest ones, but y'all may not realize it, but the entire almost first 10 years of radio around the world is gone. It's erased from history because there was no way or either no one wanted to record it. Now, in the case of movies, yeah, all good movies get remade. And of course, the um, we do actually have an American treasury that preserves really high end or movies that are so prolific and classic that, you know, you want them to stand the test of time, literally. So that's why they get distrib redistributed on any new format every 10 to 20 years and shit like that. And they've and as old as they are, they've only inducted a little under 710 movies. And we all know that there's thousands of movies. Something's going to get lost. No matter how big or small it was, something is going to get lost. Now, when we move into the video game industry, it's even easier. When your company dies, no one knows what happens to your publication rights. We didn't even really start looking into making laws about deadware until 2007. 2007 is when we got anything close to clear and concise laws. And guess what? I still couldn't tell you what the fuck they were. Matter of fact, while you got some time, here, try Googling this while I'm talking. What happens to licensed games when the publishers die? Or when the companies die? Because I'm fucking curious. And I know y'all thought about it at least once. Um, So, my thing is, is that you have to find a way to archive and preserve. And since this stuff is always in a digital format in the beginning, it doesn't start with the physical format. A VHS begins and ends being recorded from a digital to a physical format. But a video game is a bit different. You can take it off of that physical formatting easier, well, depending on hacking, but easier than you could other things. Even if the game is not hacked or it has any way or format, um, of being interpreted you can still remove the data from the disc or rather duplicate the data from the disc so you can archive it so someone else can get into it that's a luxury that did not previously exist that being said all these game companies they really only mess with these emulator people because they want fucking money but the problem is is that they don't always re-release something the guise of a re-release is usually what we all know how soon is it away from a new game coming out for the newer systems? If it's too far away, let's re-release some old shit. Or, hey, this was really, really popular. Uh, we want to get more money without having to, you know, feed the GameStop beast, which you'll indirectly do anyway. So, instead of just putting on the virtual council, which they could literally put up everything, let's also release it physically. Like, all these companies, they could pay someone to go and put their entire libraries, their back catalog, on a virtual council. They could stop GameStop, no pun intended. Of course there'll be stop. I know. Of course there'll be some casualties like people without the internet, and I do feel for them because you know what? Even if you have the internet, then you gotta get a premium subscription service on shit. And it's it's a headache. It really is. And then there's also the fact that limited data capacities and we're getting ready to go into the super high-end resolutions so data volume is going to do exactly what it did when HD came out it was either going to see going to double or triple or go even beyond that I don't want to think about that and it's going to keep happening 
So we need to have something like this. But at the same time, who's been the major person and proponent trying to fight emulations being legal, which they technically are? The game industry. Because they know that if someone can get new stuff on an emulator, they're not likely to buy it. Statistically, PC gamers have a higher ratio to purchasing from emulation. Yes, that is true. I will not deny that. But when you're a console gamer, it's a different world. It's a different fucking world. So, that being said, I honestly feel like emulation should not be stopped, but there should be strong different types of regulations to it. Like, if someone makes an emulator, hey, fine, you go right ahead. But then the companies go and they, like, put some type of coding in it that makes it so, you know, it's not going to boot up like the 360 did unless it detects that you own this particular disc. You don't even have to install the game. Just know that the disc is in the disc tray and you can run that game, do all the save states, cheat code crap you want to to it. Because you know what? That means that that game stays in someone's possession longer. And when the game stays in someone's possession longer and it's a good game, people are going to want it. And what's going to happen? It'll get reproduced. And when it gets reproduced and bought, what's going to happen? GameStop's going to be pissed that people aren't getting rid of their use because now they can perfectly archive it via an emulator. That being said, the half-life of data on a traditional CD is a little over 22 years at best, if well kept up. So at the end of the day, I feel like it's an unsolvable problem. Do you want to go next, Telford? As far as emulators go, mm -hmm. um, I understand, like, the companies are losing a massive amount of money because people are playing games that they could be purchased for free. Yeah, so and to top it off, they fucking use yeah, games. Com companies are absolutely furious about that. Um, I believe that, like, Whoops. I'm okay with emulators. I mean, don't be wrong, I've downloaded emulators and played emulators and, you know, done all that, had all the fun in the world, right? But same time, I can see it from the company's perspective where it's like they're losing money directly out of pocket, you know? Any profit that a company loses, the company's going to be pissed, especially over something as easy as, oh, I'm going to download an emulator, and I'm going to download every game I ever wanted to play on that particular system. And so, uh, I think that, like, I'm... They need to have better regulations for the emulators, and it could make a world of difference. Um, if regulations came down where, you know, companies got, you know, even, even 50%, not, not 50%, even, you know, 30% profit out of downloaded emulators um, from whatever, like, I don't know, however the emulating people get money, because I'm not, I'm not sure how the whole system works. But I'm Basically, sure there's profit to be made somewhere happen, else it wouldn't have happened. People give them donations, quote unquote, but the donations don't really go to support the emulator. What happens is the donation goes into the pockets of the people that make the emulator because they already got the code right there. So all they're really doing is enhancing it and enhancing it. But that payment that they're getting is incentive to keep doing it. Okay, so I make an emulator, and people donate money to me to make sure that I keep have the have a keep on it before yeah, maintenance if the shit goes down. Yeah, and updating it to do it unnatural shit that the video game system don't do. Yeah, I'm not even sure how you know if regulations came down, how anybody would regulate that. Exactly. So honestly, like whoever is doing the emulators, that's. Pretty smart shit. Like, I, I gotta give them mad props for that. And they're more dedicated than fucking half these companies are. Fun fact. I don't know what, uh, the around the time you and Hill was born, the Sega Saturn came out. They just figured out how to crack it open and decrypt it and hack it this year. You know what I'm That is dedication.
All right, who want to go next? I'll go. Coming up behind me and doing second. That's the way. I always did my past, my footsteps. But I'm making a better future. Yeah. <laughs> because I've paved the road for you, kid. Oh, shit, I'm making my own way. Isn't he older than you? No, no I'm older than him. I was curious about that. I was curious about it too, so I looked it up and I'm over it. Go ahead, Hill. Anyway, my sense of emulation is that they seem to, for the emulators that I've found and I've played, it kind of helps people who want to play the games, but due to increasing technology and no one believing and backwards compatibility anymore, besides Nintendo sometimes, that there's nothing else to really reach out to to play these old games. So, they go to emulations. Also, emu some emulators actually give people what they want sometimes in certain games. Because I was watching a YouTube video that there was a emulator fan-made Pokemon game that was going on for eight years and Nintendo shut it down because they didn't want them to make that game because they were going to lose profit. But why not work with these people to actually make some of this shit? Because it's some good shit they're making. And people actually show interest in downloading a millions and millions and actually donating to the cause of fake games. I mean, you can grab these people like, hey, you want to actually make these games and actually someone make a profit and help us? Get out whatever slump we're in, because you seem to know what people actually want to play. That's why I don't think emulators are too bad. Another reason I fucking like emulators, I'm not, well, what you call the biggest rare collector ever but it's not so much if i know it's rare as it is if i know it's fun some games increase in value like i don't want to have to pay almost as much as a system for a game i enjoyed like 10 15 years ago i don't want to do that and then to top it off the companies get none of that money so, I mean, like, what am I really supposed to do at that point? Anyways, by the way, Hill, um, what did Google tell you? <laughs> I couldn't find anything because it seems just like video game licensing just kind of up in the air. Unless you're, like, with somebody who actually has stuff copyrighted, they don't seem to care. Although... They said emulator isn't really illegal. It's just more breaking the copyright laws than anything else that I could find. If you're breaking laws, that's illegal. Well, well, that's the thing about that. There's a difference between illegal and unlawful. A big difference. Unlawful might get you into some trouble. Illegal crime. It's unlawful to litter. Unlawful, not illegal. That sounds pretty stupid to me. Yeah, I know. The difference between unlawful and illegal is like so odd. Sometimes I, I will Google it even though I know what the fuck they both mean. In fact, hell, I would encourage that. Google the definition of unlawful and the definition of illegal. It's weird. All right. So uh, I guess that just leaves you, Mr. Pikamitsu. Yes. Um, emulation. I've had my fair share of uh, doing emulation. I remember way back when I was still in grade school, before I went to high school. I was playing. That's nice. I was playing Pokemon Red on a GB emulator on my old ass like 486 processor computer in DOS 
and I was having fun with it that way. And then I saw there were modifications to mods, well, to the emulators, emulated ROMs, that uh, made it so that the Pokemon actually became horn-like figures. And I laughed. Yeah, it was one of the weirdest, stupidest things ever. But I, I had a good laugh when I was playing it, and I'd make sure that my parents didn't see it. But, besides the point... I've been through pretty much all of the old generations of emulation, like basically almost everything like cartridge based I've emulated at one point in time. And the reason I do it is that the games that I want to play back in the cartridge days were some of like the most obscure damn things that you would never find on like a Nintendo eShop or sometimes even like these older places that sell these older games. Prime example, on the original Nintendo Entertainment System, have any of you ever heard of Kabuki Quantum Fighter? No. Was that the flying head thing? Not the flying head thing, no. Oh, well then, nope. I've heard of it, but I've never played it. Yes, that was, that was a game that I had as a kid. And I do remember, these were quite a few good memories. I remember one day when I was a kid during a weekend, I managed to beat that game ten times in one day because I felt like it. And it got to the point where I could beat the entire game without losing a single life. And then fast forward a decade and or so later, which is about maybe a year ago now, mm -hmm. I decided to grab an NAS emulator, find that game, and then go through it again and see if I could beat it without losing a single life. I can still do it. It's just those little obscure things, just to bring back those old memories, a nice fondness. That's what I think emulation should be for. Nostalgia. Not for like, not not for all like, yeah, nostalgia. Not for all like the newest stuff, like trying to emulate like maybe like PS3 stuff. I I don't try. Um. Just, just go back and relive some of the good old days. Just don't really focus on the, the newer stuff. If you want to get some of the newer stuff, you know, by support these people who are putting in hard work and effort to try to make good things for the public. You know, that's what's going to get people motivated to make better games. You know, if, if we keep trying to emulate slash steal stuff, it's only going to turn out bad. That, that's all I have to say about that. Pretty deep, man. Mm. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, first we're going to go into our news section. I think I'm going to start dividing them up by the system. But that means I have to learn about Microsoft shit, and I really don't care. So today is just going to be... Final Fantasy shit you talked about that I really don't care. That's different. We don't care that you don't care. Well, now, we don't care that you don't care. So you're no, making no, ridiculous no. points. No, it's just you. Everyone else here well, likes Mike, likes Sony and Nintendo. Well, some of us actually like enjoy gaming, and so we play Microsoft. Mm. Mm. I should let Pikamitsu tell your that's, asshole up for that. Anyways, that's that's actually, okay, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, that's, hold that's on, okay, hold on. I'm actually going to speak on that for a moment. Since, oh, like, let's say here. Since the PS2, Xbox, like, GameCube era, I have actually owned each of the three main consoles. That's fine, but you understand that fun doesn't come from one system only. Right. Fun comes from whatever system you and your friends play together to enjoy. So, see, if you like back you have no you just play Nintendo by yourself. I'm so, gonna play Smash all by myself. And then yeah, they bought him. Then they Smash. created amiibos. Then they created amiibos. So he gets the feeling that he's playing with people, but it's really just himself again. Who is Go he back describing? down to your mom's basement. Back. Go back down to your mom's basement. Oh no, man! Dude. I've I've actually played Smash with my friends. They used to come over every Friday night after they got out of the bowling league, and we would just play like hours of melee and then brawl when it came out. Yeah, man! Like, like back on the game and shit. Well, like back on the Wii U, I mean on the Wii, when you could play good GameCube controllers back when that was the shit. But like yeah. nowadays, nah. 
Yeah, it moved over 4 yeah. million copies, and the online is insane. I don't mean insane as in oh, it's high quality. I mean, you will never not find somebody to fight at any time of the fucking day. Anyways, all right. On to our first news. Uh, on the Sony side of things, we actually got a decent amount of information. Uh, besides, well, me saying for the 15th billion time, Near Automata's demo has come out. Holiday sale week number three has officially started in the Sony camp. Now, for the uninitiated, it's basically Sony's way of saying, hey, 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 don't just give your money to Steam for their discounts. We like money, too. I wish that was a joke, but yeah, it's kind of, sort of not. So, the games that are on the, uh, the Sony side of things, they have a special category and listing where they are anywhere from 10% to, I shit you not, 70% off for the next several days. Now, as, as predicted, I'm pretty sure you're all aware, this sale goes until about uh, the start of the new year. So for those of you Sony boys out there, or That's just true. someone who's bored and you want something new and you don't want to go to a store in this cold ass weather, depending on where you are, let me tell you what you can look forward to. That's very convenient. I can just go to that and pull it up directly from my PS4 that I got running. Mm. Because it's like the first thing you see, too, when you log in. Mm. All right. I, I can take, take a, a look, look at week three, three stuff. stuff. I'm about to tell I gotta you. honestly say it is a little bit weaker than the other two weeks that have come up so far. Uh -huh. Just a little bit, though. Well, I mean, you can't blame them, though, because they're going throughout the year. If you notice, they're kind of sort of going throughout the year. So week mm. three, if it's if it's the middle of the year, you know, the game drop, though. The game drop. Mm -hmm. All right, so. What we have available is Overwatch, Overwatch is discounted to $39.59. Call of Duty Legacy Edition, $59, down from $80. Wow. Star Wars Battlefront 1, $10. Need for Speed PlayStation 4, $9.89. Star Wars Battlefront 1949, Grand Theft Auto 5, $30. Digital Deluxe Edition of Call of Duty Bundle Pack, $80. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, the game no one plays, $39.59. Mortal Kombat XL, $20. Hitman PS4, the first season, $30. Destiny, the collection bundle, $40.59. Tom Clancy, Rainbow Six Siege, seriously a good one, guys. Go pick that shit up. Down from $50 to $20. Mad Max, $10. Middle, a game of the year edition of Shadow of Mordor, $10. Star Wars Battlefront 14 Star Wars Battlefront 2 Deluxe Edition 14.99 Star Wars Battlefront Ultimate Edition 27.99 Oxenfree $8 Bloodborne $8 Star Wars PS2 Bounty Hunter $4 Oh sorry 3.50 Star Wars Battlefront Death Star Expansion 7.49 Destiny the Collection Upgrade Currently unavailable. Oh, that sale ended. Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, 10, say 50%. Nice. Overcooked, 11.38. Star Wars, yeah, that's going to keep coming up. Star Wars Battlefront, Ultimate Upgrade Pack, 9.99. Monopoly Family Pack Fun, 10 bucks. The Escapist, 6 bucks. Manhunt, PS4 version, 7.49. Final Fantasy XIV, online, 1979. That's an interesting price. Final Fantasy XIV Heaven's Word Standard Bundle. Oh, that sale's over. Slender Man The Arrival 249. Kind of think that game sucks. Metal Slug Anthology 799. Bloodborne Complete Edition Bundle down from 50 to 20. Hitman Introduction Prologue Pack 750. These are add-ons, add-ons. Max Payne PS2, $750. Paragon Epic Expansion, $2849. Red Dead Revolver, $899. Plants vs. Zombies 2, 
A yet another Star Wars Battlefront pack. Two fifty. Risk of Rain, six ninety nine. Payday two. Crime Wave Expansion, seventeen forty nine. A lot of this ain't even really a fucking game. Street Vector EX, seven forty nine. Metal Gear Solid Five Definitive Edition, thirty three forty nine. Minecraft Story Mode, four ninety nine. NASCAR Heat Evolution, twenty five ninety nine. Star Wars Racer Revenge, three fifty. Like that's possible. Rayman's Legends, thirteen ninety nine. Rip 2 GP Renegade, $4.99. Pro Evolution Soccer, $2017. $38.99. Plants vs. Zombies 1, $25. Oh, no. Number 2. Festival Edition, $24.99. Let's see what else we got. Primal Carnage Extinction, $7.99. Torrent, $4.99. Am I looking at that one? Shantae's Risky Revenge, Director's Cut, $2.50. Rockstar 2014, Re Rocksmith 2014 Remastered, 1479. Add on, add on, add on. Mordheim, City of the Dam, 2799. Slain, Back from Hell, $10.04. Interesting. Adventure Time, Finn and Jake, 299. Pang Adventures, $5. Pang Adventures? Worms WMD. $20.09. These prices are odd. Metal Slug 3, $6. Ninja, oh, my. Ninja Pizza Girl, $5. Okay. Paranormal Activity. Oh, no. Paranautical Activity, $339. Machinarium, $399. RBI Baseball 16, $659. Banner Saga 2, $13.99. The Escapist plus the Escapist Walking Dead Edition, $8.99 bundle. Republic, $9.99. Party Hard, $3.30. Mirror's Edge Catalyst Edition, $11.99. Sheltered, $4.50. Super Hyper. No, no, it's just called Super Hyper. $20.09 for some odd reason. Snoop, the Peanuts movie is also $19.49. Not sure why that's there. Stardust Vanguard, $0.99. Huh. Interesting. Flockers, two fifty. Beyond Eyes, three seventy four. Reyes, seventeen forty nine. Rive, ten dollars. Prototype one, nine eighty nine. Zotrix, one ninety nine. Psychopaths, Mandatory Happiness, twenty dollars. My Night Job, three nineteen. And the Better Saga Complete Pack Edition, twenty three ninety nine. Followed by Lifeless Planet, four ninety nine. And Metrico, six ninety nine. God damn. Ah, that took it out of me. So yeah, other than that, um, Sony ain't really doing shit. It's the end of the year, and I'm not about to look up Vita sales for shit. I don't care what they got on sale. I don't hate the Vita. I think, but still, fuck that shit. Mm. On to Nintendo news. Now, this one's a bit interesting. I want your opinion on it, everyone who isn't Telford. But Telford will give his <laughs> opinion anyway because he's Telford and that's what he like to do. Fuck shit up. Yeah, right. Anyways. All right. Nintendo recently released, as most of you may or may not know, Mario Party Go. Uh, not Mario Party Go. Mario um, Run or Mario Dash, some shit like that. Now, the game is approximately $9.99 for a goddamn cell phone game. Now, with that being said, it's got a very good positive rating and is going on to become one of the most successful mobile titles that has ever existed. It grosses almost $10 million in revenue a day. A day. What? Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> so, yeah. Um... Guess what happened? Nintendo stock prices dropped. Let me, let me say that again. They're pissing money, but their stock prices dropped. How the fuck does your stock drop and your money go up? Well, there's two ways that can happen. One, greedy sociopaths are leaving your company, so you get better. You get you oh you get stuck with only people who actually care about what you're doing, and two. Um, actually, no, I really don't have it to. That's the only thing I can come up with. Look, 
I don't know the official statement as to why this is happening. That being said, the Nintendo contacts I do have, they're not necessarily on the low end of things, but they're not going to be at a board meeting, so they wouldn't know either. However, I can hypothesize based on what I fucking said earlier. Yes, I said hypothesize. I'm tired of hearing everyone say theory. God damn it. Those words mean two different things. Somebody looking up in a dictionary. I promise you they'll come out different. Anyways. Hypothesis. Yeah, hypothesis theory. and theory. Yeah, so basically, Nintendo set a cap on how much can be spent on that mobile game. And they plan to do that for every future mobile title that they make. I think that pissed off money-grubbing shareholders who didn't actually give a shit about the company. They just want money. That's what I think. Because Nintendo, first and foremost, they've never been a company that likes to release shit products. They even tell people at their in their board meetings and investor meetings, look, we're not going to try to ever release things that are going to make a profit or can make a quick buck, but are going to suck. It's one of their business models and philosophies. I think somebody didn't expect them to carry that logic over into the mobile market. I, I just truly think that what it is. I think it's the same with those fair weather motherfuckers who jumped in on the Pokemon Go bandwagon. Nintendo stock price almost like what was it, doubled or tripled? But then when Nintendo openly admitted, because it wasn't a secret, hey, we commissioned this game. We didn't make this game. This company made this game. Stock went back down. And they still pissed money. But the stock went back down. Now, uh, Mr. Mitsu, what's your feelings on that? Um, I actually do want to ask a quick question. Right um, I know that during, it was either during this past week or the week before, there may have or may not have been some leaks about some stats about the Switch. I'm not asking you about what those stats actually were. I'm just asking, was something actually leaked within this last week or two? Stats as far as what? Um, I heard something about it may have been processor speed, processor power, something around the lines on around the blah 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 okay, along the you, lines of that. Say you're talking mm -hmm. about the switch, okay? Yeah, there was something. There's a lot of that going on. In fact, it's pretty much been non-stop. At least every three days, we find out something new. Hmm. Do you think that could have had any kind of influence as far as the Nintendo stock prices dropping because people that are invested are not liking what they're seeing? No, because when it comes to the consoles, or at least the big ones, they're hit the hardest they're ever going to be hit when it comes to their consoles within that first fiscal year. But the Switch isn't out yet. Mm. So... We have no idea how big of an effect it's truly going to have until after it drops. Because people watch that shit religiously, then they decide what they're going to do based on what they've seen. Mm. I'm just thinking if like if some investors are so stupid that they just have the nope mentality. Oh, well, as in those I, one I, thing I, I'll definitely tell you that. Oh. There's no such thing as a perfect group of investors. There's always a dumb motherfucker somewhere. Let's not bullshit. Every group has a hill. Y'all wish y'all could have me. Hmm. I, I expected you to, you know, go a little further. Okay. Like, I, I just thought point he was going to say something like, well, even if I'm stupid, at least I'm prettier than you. Like, I just thought he was going to say something else. Point proven. Thank, Thank you. Hill, mm -hmm. when, you yeah. see the, when you see the beast coming, you don't let it eat you. You shoot it. Also, I just dropped in um, some uh, Game of Sutra information re in regards to Mario Part and the Mario game and how good it's doing. So, yeah, y'all can go and take a look at that quick read real quick. But, um, Coleman, like I said, my thing is, is that we're not going to know until we know. It was the same with the Wii U. The Wii U had so much hype around it. Half of it was due to confusion, but it had so much hype. 
but it didn't truly affect Nintendo's pricing stocks and all that shit till after it came out. And that shit did like Snoop Dogg and dropped it like it's hot. Ah, uh, I like it. Of course you do, because you hate the Wii U. I don't hate it. I'm actually not. I, I'm not I, against it. I, just, I don't respect it. I, I have one, and I don't respect it. I genuinely just think to myself, you know, if I'd have just stopped at a 3DS, I probably wouldn't even be that mad. See, my dumbass got rid of the fucking 3DS. I had a, a, a AIT. Yeah, and I just fucking to, told you before to you even got a, a Wii U. I literally said that to you, like, dude, dude, <laughs> do not do that. But like a great many things I tell you, you young motherfuckers, even if I know exactly how it's going to end, nah, young niggas got to do their own thing. I told you that was a fucking bad idea. I needed the cash. No, Who you the dumb motherfucker now? You can't be... Yeah, yeah, uh, there you go, here. You don't like... No, you don't. Because first off, you were getting free money and you had free goddamn health care. Like, everything was provided for you other than junk food. Look, with the deal that I was given for the 3DS and like 15 games, I was getting a fucking... $400 bundle for jack shit, honestly. Even though you could have just spent like half or a third of a check, bought the damn thing, and then be with it coming and going. Because what was going to happen the next week, or rather the next month? Another check. There's a difference between saving money and giving away profit. When you give your shit to GameStop, you're not saving money. You're giving away fucking profit. You're just absolutely against everything GameStop, aren't you? No. I'm just not understanding. Specifically, you, as much as you talk about Smart and Hill being dumb, dude, I keep telling you, I see everything and I hear everything on that fucking site, on the Amazon, eBay, all of it. You're the only one who consistently keeps doing the shit that you're doing. I don't get it. And it works for me. No, it doesn't, but you still do it. I'm not trying to stop you. I'm just trying to fucking understand it. There's somebody who's going to try to kill himself today. I'm not trying to be like him. I will, however, try to understand how the fuck he got that way. So potentially I can stop somebody the fuck else. So you're not going to stop him? Wow, the dick. No, it, depends, it depends on who it is. If it's like Kim Kardashian, no. If it's Kanye West, oh. if he pays me. Now, if it was Eminem, yes. Yes. That is a national treasure. Go ahead. You go stop the white boy, but fuck all the black people. Talking about, I'm the, I'm the off, one that needs the white first people. First off, let me just say this right now. I, I know it's been a bit of a that's, serious that's a, topic that's exactly this what whole you just entire said. year. <laughs> and I know it's going to press a lot of people's buttons because, you know, the country's divided on this, but let me just say right now, Kardashian lives don't matter. <laughs> At least that's one statement we can all agree on. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Anyways, um, no, it's like I said, it's like people say they want to do this, they want to do that, then they want to come back and like, ha, I did this. I'm so smart. And then I explained to them, well, I don't know if you're smart, but I know what you've done is stupid. Here's why. And then they want to come at me like I'm, well, like I made them a bitch, even though it wouldn't have happened if they themselves weren't trying to make me a bitch. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm a general manager and I'm a dish and I have direct connections with the distribution chain. I know how shit works. You know how little money every big company gets when you buy their game? Take a stab at it. Mm, a thousand. Okay, let me phrase that. Do you know how much money someone like Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft get when they sell one of their first party games new? Physically. Not much. Fucking dirt cheap. No, no, no. I mean, like, what number would you think? A mm, hundred thousand. Dude, one individual game. Shit, come on. I like it. <laughs> I like it. You see, you see like, uh. God damn. For every, everything previously that I've said, 
he proves my fucking point. Yeah, I throw him a bone, then he fucking just like, nah, nah, throw me a boomerang. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just like, ah. They I, get echo. less, they barely get a double digit amount of money. And depending yeah. on where you are and what taxes there are in countries and regions, they're getting less than nine to ten dollars. How the fuck? For one game, if you go and you pick up the game that you want today, $60. Sony as a fucking company, yeah, you pay sixty dollars for a brand new game. Sony as a company maybe gets ten bucks. Not a, thousand, not a thousand. Not a thousand. Goddamn guy. <laughs> And to top it off, it's also why we can't kill DLC. Because DLC can make the company, the um, the original company or publisher, more money than the actual game can. Yeah, because it's mostly profit. They be- When they put something up on the store, yeah, let's hypothetically. Let's say you're Grand Theft Auto. You know you're going to sell millions, hundreds of millions. So you know what that means? Let's say you sold 100 million. That means that, and this is before we include any type of region shit in taxes, you're barely making back of your 100 million, you're barely making back 10 million. 10 million. So if the game costs you 5 million to make, you've got 5 million in profit. So what does that mean? DLC. Let's say you get one DLC item and it's a dollar. Now let's say, 60 to 70 percent of the people who purchase your game have access to the internet now since your DLC uh, and DLC purchasing is directly tied in the pricing of course there's those noble holdouts and there's nothing wrong with that but the cheaper it is the more likely somebody's to get now let's say that's 70 percent 50 percent buy the DLC and it's one dollar so that means that of your 70 million 50 million pay for one dollar DLC so that's fifty million dollars now obviously Sony gets a cut out of that which is like two three percent five percent maybe a little bit less of every single DLC purchase so now you've made your money back off of a DLC item that was one dollar mind you your game had to be good as shit but still you see my point and then Mm -hmm. there's the season pass bullshit they don't even know what they're going to put in the season pass, but they know that they want people to pay for a season pass. And dumbasses <laughs> will do that without even knowing what's in a goddamn season pass. And the average starting price of a season pass is $20. So if I pay $60 for a game, I go home and I pay $80 for a season pass. That means that that company, off of me alone, has made more profit than if they had sold three to four copies of that game. DLC money, main purpose is to take money out of GameStop's pocket. And I don't mean as in, oh, well, uh, the DLC is not on the disc, might as well get digital, which they would love. But it just means that now they've made it so the majority of profit isn't going from people who distribute their games to the stores and GameStop. That means there's also a bigger portion going in their wallet. Also... Every single company you can think of hide their digital profit sales because they know they get slammed with higher taxes and higher fees and other shit like that. But if you stop and think about it, it's very simple. If I sell a game, millions of copies, we already know at least 20% by default is going to go into digital version. They bought the digital version. I've basically made the equivalent of five to six purchases worth of my profit off of one person buying the digital version. But at the same time, developers also take value in physical versions when they do limited edition stuff because they want people to get the physical and keep the physical or rather they want them to pay an absorbent fee for the physical so they can get a decent chunk back and they're going to make sure that they can also, they'll also most likely be inclined to get DLC because that's actually a fact. People who are inclined to buy bundles and expensive profile versions of game titles oftentimes do get DLC, and that's how the, that's how fucked the market is right now. And that's why Token Games is trying to change that. 
and for the most part succeeding. So yeah, food for thought. Every time you buy a game, depending on how you bought it, somebody barely made a full 10. <coughs> so yeah. Now, I guess we'll go to off of that little tangent into you, Heal, and a brief reminder of the question because I know we got way the hell off topic. All right. Nintendo is pissing money. According to the council maker, which fired out a Japanese press release translated by NeoGAF, the Apple exclusive platformer has amassed 40 million downloads in four days' time. So basically every day, 10 mil. Now, here's the thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Nintendo didn't reveal how many of those initial downloads translated into sales. But the latest App Any data, which is kind of like an aggregator, for Mario Run says it's $14 million in its first three days. And that amount of money has only increased. Now, that being said, why do you think with them pissing money right now and Pokemon Go in its second win because Johto shit's coming in soon, why do you think that their stock price devalued? Stock calls not they actually go into the mobile companies who actually made this game and used Nintendo as a clutch to help actually promote their own shit because with I fuck who made Pokemon Go? Can't think. Yeah, Titanic. 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 Shut up. Yeah, whatever the fuck they are. Anyway, since they since they used Nintendo to make this great game, people can go to whatever the hell they're called and make another game, and they'll jump on that. Because they also believe maybe that they're gonna survive off of their latest Pokemon entry and their upcoming console coming out later this month, which may bring back up their stock. But right now, since everything seems to be shifting towards mobile, they're not going to focus on a major game company. They're going to focus on more of their mobile counterparts and help promote them and get them going because that's, that's where most of the money seems to be going. And a hush falls over the crowd. Alright, Chelford, how do you feel? Honestly. I have... I, got, I feel a different on the matter. Honestly. Doesn't matter one way or the other to me. Uh, if they want to lose money and make money at the same time, like if their stocks go down but they're still making money, it's not my business, but, you know, whoever made the business decision to uh, you know, do something that they probably kind of figured that people were not going to like, like that's on them, I'm sure billionaires can lose a couple of hundred million and still be fine. Okay. Well, uh, I already said my opinion, uh, Pika Mitsu, I think he was after me, but we went on a giant tangent, so uh, I guess we can slightly pop back into Sony news, because I just found out about this fairly recently, and I'm interested in y'all opinion, and well, we haven't really hit our 60 minute mark yet, so, um, alright, so, who here plays or knows what Tekken is? Hell yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Again, we all know it, though. Something very unusual has been happening in the Namco, ba the house of Namco Bandai. Um, as we all know, uh, Namco Bandai hit a bit of a decline with their Soul Calibur series after games four and five came out, and not so much were critically mixed, but so much as they were considered incomplete. Only to have the designer of number five verify this is an incomplete game. 
which they never actually went on to complete. They recently released a trailer, which has one of the most gangster ass Soul Calibur songs remixed I've ever heard. And I've been playing Soul Calibur since before it was Soul Calibur. Because it was called something else back in 1998. And Soul Blade. And Soul Edge. And they said that they made a video announcing the 20th anniversary of Soul Calibur, but they didn't say anything about it. They made no acknowledgments for releasing or re-releasing old titles, and they didn't fucking announce a new game. It was just a really weird trailer with some baller-ass music. In fact, I'm going to play that shit right the fuck now just because can't nobody <laughs> copyright us. Fuck you, YouTube. Tired of your bullshit trying to copyright a nigga. Yeah. Fuck YouTube. Fuck GameStop. I'm Zach. Fuck Microsoft. Anything else? You know. You don't actually oh, sound like me. Oh, fuck white right? bitches. I don't have sex with white women. That's you. You can't even stay in character. I wanted to add that because, you know, it's always fun to fuck a white bitch. I wouldn't know. See, and that's why, that's why you're so uptight about stupid bullshit, you know? You gotta fuck a white bitch and relax a little bit. Uh, dick down the Asians. Hey, those are fun, too. All right, show oh, yeah. music's playing. You gotta have background music. I gotta hit that beat. Well, someone needs to stop smacking their head against the keyboard or something. No, it's my uh, floor heater. I'm trying to kick off. So it makes it super Shut up! Silent. You know I heard that fucked up shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking asshole. You had one job. You three, Larry, Curly, and Moe, you had one job. And much like your counterparts, you just said, eh, fuck it. I'm sitting here waiting for you to play shit. I'm waiting yeah, to hear something. Yeah, waiting this Soul Calibur hot beat, apparently. Wait, y'all didn't hear that? No. We heard the tapping. Oh, fuck, y'all didn't hear any of that? No. Son of God a bitch. Damn it. Oh. Ain't this some shit? Y'all can't hear music on my end. Okay. Well, I know what that means. Means use a bitch. No, it means if share screen. Time. It means she share said, screen and shut the fuck up. He said it's quiet time now. I gotta listen to my fapping music. Shut up. Okay, do y'all see the share screen? It's loading slow. Yeah. yeah. God damn it, now I gotta go back into my Skype. There it is. Alright, so y'all can see yeah. my screen now, right? Mm-hmm. Alright, I'm gonna play it again. Now can y'all hear it? Yep. Oh no. I can't yeah. hear it again. Can you hear it? Full cool weapons though. You can't hear shit. What the fuck? Oh well. Do what you usually do, but the YouTube link in and you can just watch it individually. Yeah, he wanted it for the recording. Uh, honestly, don't sit right on the Then again, I don't really know how share screen works that much. I'm really upset. They claim that Soul Calibur 5 was incomplete. And then they do it like three days after the damn game came out. Can you imagine how fucking salty everyone was? 
Anyways. Mm -hmm. All right. So also, besides that Soul Calibur news, or lack thereof, I should say, they have officially closed and discontinued Tekken Revolution. Now, I'm wondering, do you guys think that this could foreshadow anything? Also, if you didn't know what it was, that's fine. Tekken Revolution was a free-to-play version of Tekken where there was nothing to do except fight people, and it was free, and it had, like, maybe 15 characters in it. And we're going to start with Pikamitsu. Well, of course, closing a project basically means freeing up resources for another project. Um, if they decide to start work on a new Soul Calibur or remaking another one, that's fine. I'd really like to see, you know, Namco's version on the whole Tekken vs. Street Fighter thing because way back in the day, I remember when this whole collaboration was going to be going on, Capcom said they would have their turn at making a game combining two franchises, and then Namco was going to have a turn combining two franchises. I'm still waiting for that other turn. Soul Calibur, man, I can only hope for good things for Soul Calibur. I liked 4, 5 was kinda off, although I still did make characters take them online, take ass weapons, deal out ass weapons. But I just have to go. Okie dokie, thanks for the heads up. Um, but yeah, I just really hope if they are making a Soul Calibur 6, um, Decent netcode for online play, uh, decent single player stuff, and make make the costume like building character stuff a little bit more in depth, and I I think you'll be set. All right, what about you, Hill? Shine down the Tekken project. I'm so I'm agreeing with him that they're planning something better. It's like, nah, nah, this is too easy. We're gonna make this bigger and better, and get more money out of this shit. People actually enjoy our games again. People won't go to King of Fighters or spend all their money on horrible de dead or alive DLC bullshit. We're actually gonna make a good game. Now, I love how you find a way to bring that shit up anytime we talk about fighting games. Yeah, oh my fuck, I hate they lost all respect. Hey, call me. Now, I'm tell you about that. Pika Mitsu, did we ever tell you about the DOA thing? Uh, what DOA thing? Go ahead and we tell spent, me. It's funny when we you do We spent time and calculated how much money people have spent in total for the all of the Dead or Alive 5 Final Fight DLC. Well, I'm not really concerned about how much people have actually spent. I'm just concerned about what percentage of people who actually bought those costumes are fapping over them. All of them. Maybe a good 80%. Women do play games, but still people are beaten off to them. I'm just saying, women will slick to it too. They'll just put the controller right up there and just take an ass whoop and feel good at the same time. It's just gone too far. It's probably the truth, you know. Someone's out there is doing it. Hey, Pika, I just, I just want you to know, you are the new, you're the new Turner Tornado. I want you to know that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if I should be glad about that or not, but hey, it's a new title. Me neither. I am not sure. Oh my god. So yeah, uh, once calculated, we figured out that you would have enough money to buy two PlayStation Pros. And a VR headset, and a spare controller, and a game, and still have change left over. That's how much costume DLC they get. Hmm. That's pretty big amount. Oh yeah, and they can't even keep their prices consistent on DLC characters. Some of which come from different games. How dare they? <laughs> Dude, like... Oh, you should have been there. It was like, it was like if you took Hill's brain and you took Casanova's brain 
then you froze them in ice. Then you just took them out and you hit them with a bat. Like, they was all over the place. Oh, my God. Hey. All right. Um, so pissed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Anyways, well, besides that, uh, I will just, uh, my opinion is pretty simple. I don't trust them with Soul Calibur anymore. I think they're going to DOA it. And I really don't want them to DOA it. Or at least I would like if they didn't release a fragmented product. Either way, I'm going to be cautious and not buy it when it first comes out so I don't get fucked like I did with every Soul Calibur after 3. Now, that being said, that brings us into our final little section, which as we know is the what are we looking into or want people to look into. And I'm going to go first. Two things for me. Yeah, fuck you. I don't have a full game, so two demos. Gravity Rush 2 demo is now out on the PlayStation 4 store. The reason I like this game, or I want y'all to look into it, is because I bet everybody in this motherfucker can count on one fucking hand without using their fingers. You can count off how many action games you know where you have direct say-so and manipulation in the gravitic physics. Not a game where you can change the gravity or the ceiling becomes the ground. Ooh. No, I mean like you can literally just say, hey, gravity, fuck you, start floating in midair, and then magnetize your foot up some enemy's ass. I'm not even being metaphorical about that. You can fucking do that. And also the near Automata demo. Because how often do we get an action RPG that plays like Devil May Cry 1 with the combat system reminiscent of Bayonetta 2? That's right. It exists. And they both come out near the beginning of next year. Get them bitches. They, they fight. Go ahead, Hill. Uh. Oh, for me, for games, I want people to look into right now. Yeah. The Dishonored games. So, son of a bitch, I was going to say that. These games make me try harder than any game so far I have played. Because Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second. You're actually trying hard in Dishonored 2? I'm playing the first one, then the second one, because the first one is still making me sneak like a motherfucker. And all the other games I've tried sneaking, they just said, eh, kill him. The siren says, no, you will fucking hide, your fucking dumbass, until it's time to come out. You suck. Yeah. I'm used to, I'm more used to mercenary work, as in, you are wanted, you will die. Not, I'm an assassin, I have to kill them without being seen. So that's why I also enjoy Dishonored games. Also the fucking thing where you're framed for the kidnapping and the murder. That was very enjoyable. It's like, I didn't do it. Which are honestly still fucking pissing me off how they say you at the right place at the wrong time because your ass is called back early. Where they honestly, if you were to apparently wait one more day for your return... You would have been played upon and said, go hunt the people who killed her. Any other games? No. Any other games? Titanfall 2. Of the SPF... Yeah. FPS market, Titanfall 2 is very interesting as to... It not saying, go stand here and get all the kills. No, you gotta run around because niggas got fucking giant robots breaking buildings and shit, destroying your fucking hiding place, making you look like a little bitch. And you gonna do fun parkour, shit. parkour shit before any of the new Call of Duties try to rip that shit off from under them. But they actually do it good and use actual physics in their jumps and shit. And you can also customize a different robot per different class to your liking. Okay. Well, 
Uh, for the record, I do have one actual game. It just dawned on me because it's in my 3DS. Because, well, God knows I'm not touching my Wii U again anytime soon. Um, Project X Zone 2. Speaking of crossovers, the original or the originator of the whole Namco Bandai Capcom friendly little rivalry, Namco Cross Capcom has had numerous sequels that all ended up coming out in America but they were never called Namco Cross or Namco X Capcom. The latest iteration is Project X Zone 2, which features Sega characters, Nintendo characters, Capcom characters, and of course Namco Bandai characters all in one action RPG, and you simultaneously control two at the same time. It's also a strategy-based game. Yeah, go get that shit. It's crazy. If you've liked any character from any franchise, in those from those companies in the past decade, they're probably in there, or at least represented in some way. Yes. I got a team they... full of ninjas. I got the OG, the OG gangster shinobi from Sega on a team with the new shinobi from the PS2 game and Nightshade the sequel. And then you know who else just showed up out of nowhere? A real nigga. A hit of you after my own heart. Stride a motherfucking hit of you in that bitch. And then, oh my gosh. then they couldn't find Taki because Taki's still missing as of the story in Soul Calibur 5. And this game likes to interweave the actual storylines. So you're playing Natsu looking for Taki. All them bitches showed up at once, at the same time. And then, because if there wasn't enough ninjas, they had to put in a real ninja. They put in fucking the ninja from Virtual Fighter. What the fuck? And you meet them all at the same time. Hi, 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 hi. Yup. All it was was, oh, you a ninja? I what the fuck? They have a sale from Hack GU? I need this game. I need this fucking Dude, game. You can play Crime and Lucina too. <laughs> this game is mine. Holy fuck. Hey, hey, who should you buy it from? You guys. Mm -hmm, that's right, motherfucker. Because you like three purchases away from being a VIP any damn way. Anyways, yeah, yeah. And the opening, that opening though. When you see Dante turn into a fucking demon. And then you see Haseo turn into his exit form. And they start shooting ninjas. The ball of shit. Alright, Pikamitsu, your turn. And you can't say okay. Dishonored. So Oh, right, so I was going to say, since Dishonored was already mentioned, I'm going to bring up a game that came out just yesterday, the new Shantae game, Half Genie Hero. I have played Risky's Revenge, it was very fun. Half Genie Hero is very good as well. Um, it brings transformations into the game, which I believe was um, in the second game in the series, I believe transformations were. Um, they're nice little add-ons that help you get into spaces which you normally couldn't. The story is okay so far, everything's holding up, the action is good, action is fluid, things look nice, Shantae's looking hot, so, so far I'm just having a lot of fun with it, gonna keep playing it, see what happens, looks like there's gonna be some new game plus stuff perhaps, maybe they're gonna be releasing a little bit of add-on content in the future, cause it looks like there's some room for it. And yeah, pick pick that up. It's only twenty bucks, and it's a pretty good deal. Am I the only one who's played Pirates Curse? Oh, sorry, I played Pirates Curse, not Risky's Revenge. Yeah, all these statements. Hmm. Oh. I said, you so, know, closing statements. Oh, oh close. Sorry, okay, you, you're a little bit far away. I couldn't understand you. Sorry, I walked so, up to the kitchen. Almost burnt my food. Uh, lovely. So your food's almost as black as you are. Fine. Okay, uh, closing statements. Nigga, how dark do you think I am? And also, do you see Hill's picture? He's, he's, well, I couldn't see him because the screen on my tablet's not that bright. Okay. Um, wow. Look at your hair. That's heel. 
<laughs> all right, all right. Um, closing statements. Well, holidays are basically here. I've already seen a laundry list of accidents that have been going on. And, yeah, with the weather that's been going on, these, like, near freezing, going just above freezing temperatures during the day, but then going back to freezing at nighttime, stuff is going to turn into slush, and then that's going to freeze, and then it's going to turn into slush and freeze again. So stuff is going to spread. Everyone, just please take care out there. Don't make a stupid decision that's only going to shave off a couple seconds off your trip, but could put yourself and other people as well in danger. Just take it easy this holiday season. If you're traveling over the weekend, be safe and just, you know, be curious. Be thoughtful about other people who are in the same situation as you. They just want to make it to their destination safe. So just take care of yourselves out there. Hill, closing statement. <clears throat> Not my best today, but trust me, I'm going to get back at that nigga next time when I'm more focused on shit. I ain't stuttering all the time. Good. That nigga ain't one shit. Good, good. Just remember, you still taller and prettier. Oh, hell yeah. I can get bitches without even trying. <laughs> all right. This nigga well, got to hide his horse teeth and shit. <laughs> Where was that fire earlier? Anyways... All right, well, hey, tis the season to fuck around with your family and friends. Look forward to next year, guys. There's a lot of good shit coming near the beginning of the year, and it's looking like there's a bit of an action resurgence, or it could be an action drought immediately after March because all the fun stuff probably is not coming out after March, except for maybe Bayonetta 2 Remake whenever that comes out on the Switch. And even then, probably won't be a lot different to it. This has uh, been another exciting episode of Token Games Podcast. I will see y'all when I see y'all.